from back talk to hitting to throwing their toys. Today's young children are getting sent to time out for all sorts of unacceptable behavior. But researchers have been warning us that it doesn't work the way parents are using it. On top of that, experts advise that using it improperly could actually cause more problems than what the parent actually started with. Let me reveal to you what's wrong with this classic timeout model and how it should be actually implemented for greater success. Let me set up a classic situation. You've got uh, two little children, and let's say we got a four-year-old and a six-year-old, and the four-year-old has built this big tower out of Duplos. He's so proud of his work. Six-year-old sees it as opportunity, comes over and bashes the tower, knocks the blocks down, and he's just beside himself because why? Siblings don't necessarily like each other. They did not pick their siblings. And sometimes it's unfortunate that parents force kids to like each other. So now we've got the little four-year-old is screaming. Mom comes flying in the room, instantly makes herself policeman, judge, and jury. She automatically determines who did what and arbitrarily says, that's it to the six-year-old, you've had it. You go to your timeout right now and you think about what you just did. So silly mom, she really thinks that the six-year-old is going to be sitting on his bed going, what will I do differently next time? Because this one didn't work. I assure you, he's not. He's actually thinking one of three possible things. One thing he's probably thinking is, <laughs> that's better than I thought. Just simply knocking down my brother's block got me noticed. Why? Because mommy's too busy watching reality TV, working her seven jobs, or fighting with grandma. Now, the six-year-old has figured out how to get attention when he wants it. All he has to do is make his brother cry. The other thing that Johnny might be sitting there thinking, that six-year-old, is, I don't like my mother. In fact, I hate my mother. And when I come out of timeout, I am really going to let her know what it's like to hear my brother scream. Now you get the buildup of anger. The third thing that the six-year-old could possibly be thinking about is, I'm such a bad boy, there's something wrong with me. I'm always getting sent to time out, and I'm not like other children. I'm broken, and there's something wrong, and mommy doesn't like me, and when I come out of here, I'm going to draw her pictures, and I'm going to sing her songs, and I'm basically going to live my life for my mom. So we have to be careful what spanking actually, or not spanking, but time out actually does. It can actually create more problems than what we actually started with. So let me run through some things about some of the issues with this, and then we'll talk about what we can do instead. The first thing is timeout is a punishment does not work. In fact, punishment doesn't work. Punishment, all that's designed to do is create some so a relief of stress for the adult temporarily. But punishment actually teaches children some very incorrect messages that parents need to help. We need to help them understand what problems are caused by it. So it doesn't work as punishment. Uh, the next thing it does is it sends us a message that says there's something wrong with you and you need, uh, you need to remove yourself from the rest of us right now and you go away because you need to be away from the rest of the family. That actually is one of the big problems with destroying ch children from developing emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is basically being in touch with my feelings so that I'll care about other people. But when we send children away for time out, it destroys that opportunity uh, from occurring. And we, we use it, we, we tend to use it when children are out of control, and that's good. And in fact, that's the only time we're supposed to be using it. Experts created time out years ago to be used in one situation. The situation is when the child is out of control and they are very likely to hurt themselves or to hurt somebody else. That's when time out is supposed to be implemented. The problem is it's being used as a, just a general discipline issue or punishment, and it, it it actually backfires when we don't use it correctly. So experts want us to use it only when children are out of control. Here's how you create a real timeout space. First of all, you have to set it up in advance. You actually make it like it's a fun thing. You, you bring the child in with you in creating that timeout. It should be a space that's preserved, always there. And I encourage parents to incorporate the, chil the children to helping you create it. It becomes their special place because it's not a bad space. It's actually a good space. It's a space where we can go to calm down. How, come on, how many of us as adults really need a space to go when we're out of control? We need that. The object is, and here's the difference, when you use it as punishment, you're saying, I'm c in control of you, and you are to go to this place. But when you create timeout the way experts really wanted us to, it teaches the child, 
that's my special place. Here's this thing that happens inside of me. It's time for me to go calm down. It's all about maintaining control of our own emotions, not waiting for somebody else to control. Because if we raise a child where we are constantly controlling the child and saying, you do this, you go here, what happens, what do you think happens when the parent is no longer around? They're out in the world waiting for someone to control them. That's why we need to teach children self-control, not external control. So after you establish the space, and that can be a, a tent, it can be a special corner in the room, uh, the first thing you want to put in that, space, in that space is something soft for the child to lay on. You want them to have this place where it's soft, like a, a, I suggest maybe an overstuffed pillow, maybe even a beanbag chair or an overstuffed quilt. And there's a reason why, because when a child classically uses this, sometimes they may actually dive into the place and you want them to be safe. You don't want them to hit their head. Um, the next thing is, is uh, 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 you have a CD player in there. I encourage parents to have like a, a small CD player with a button that's easily, easy to push with a CD with soft, gentle music because, and, and no lyrics. It's just soft melody because what that does sometimes, it allows ch children to actually calm down. So it's best if we have the boom box so the child can easily press the button, they're in control, start the music, and then I can have my timeout space begin. The next thing is something calming to look at. Uh, that could be like a poster. Um, one mom decided to implement this and she took her child shopping and let him buy anything he wanted that helped him calm down visually. And he actually picked out a Care Bear poster, which is interesting. Because in, her mom says, why, why do you want the Care Bear poster? And, and he said, because it makes me feel soft. Whatever that, so it, he, he was indicating that it, it helped him calm down, and that's really important. The next thing that, that I suggest that you have in this timeout space is something soft to touch and hold, like a teddy bear or a koosh ball. And why? Because some children can actually be affected positively by touch. When we allow children who, who are sensitive in that way to touch something soft, it like runs through their body. The whole body begins to calm down. And uh, having a teddy bear or something soft in there is really helpful. Now, after you have those things in that space, notice something visual, all right, auditory, something kinetic for touch. You've addressed all three of the major um, senses of a child. And if you have all those th three things, you're very likely to have hit the item for your child. Now remember, this is for a child who gets out of control when they have a meltdown, a screaming fit. The next thing we have to do is we have to bring that child back to a recent incident where the tantrum or the explosiveness actually occurred. And children can be as, as young as three and four to actually be able to go back there. So the object is you bring them back and you say, remember the day when you tried to kick mommy? Remember when you tried to hit daddy? And you want them to go, uh-huh. All right, so you want to bring them back to that moment, and then you ask them how it felt. How did it feel when you wanted to kick mommy? This flies in the face of a lot of families, I understand, because we were trained that, that you will not talk to me that way. You will not hit me, and that makes us get defensive and angry, but that doesn't solve the problem. So if we bring the child back to the, the place, that moment when they had that experience, say, how did that make you feel? In fact, in my book, I write extensively about the importance of the feelings. The feelings is the key to being a human being. That's what makes us different than all of the other animals we share the earth with. We're emotional creatures. So after you bring them back, you ask the child, what did it feel like to you? And to put a label on it. This one mom did this with her little boy, and she said, tell me what it, what it sounded like when, when you felt it inside. And the little boy said, amazingly, I felt growly like a tiger. So what she did was she actually put a label on it. Now it's easy to identify and say, okay, so from now on, when you get fe gr feeling growly like a tiger, you get to go to this special place. And that brings up the next point, which is role play. Once we identify with the child for them to be able to identify when I need to go there, now we can refer to it and role play with the child. You do it with him. First, you be him and race down to the place where the timeout is and show him what it looks like. 
they actually might call it, they might think it's sort of like a game in the beginning. That's all right. Because finally, when the, the child actually becomes explosive, the best thing to do is to say, it looks like you need your special place or the timeout. It takes a time, takes patience to do this, but this is the true solution to timeout, the way psychologists truly wanted us to use it, not the punishment that we use on a regular basis. So I hope you allow yourself to be open to learning. Try this with your children, and uh, you can uh, go to my website for more information if you'd like to learn more about implementing this type of timeout. Now, you wouldn't buy one coat for all of your children to wear forever, would you? Changing temperatures and growing bodies require different coats for different children for different times of the year. One size does not fit all. Same goes for timeout and other forms of discipline. Selecting the approach on raising children first requires a better understanding of the behavior of all little ones. Uh, coming up after the break, we're going to get some much needed education on the behaviors of young children from a doctor who has the answers. We'll be right back after the short break, so don't go away.